Hello everyone. On this video, we will look at a couple of problems that involve using both summation and limits together. All right, so let me see if I can focus that a little bit better. All right, so if you remember from the previous videos, these are your summations. If you have the sum of a constant from 1 to n, then that's going to equal that constant times whatever your n is. You have the sum from i equals 1 to n of just i, then that's going to equal n times n plus 1 divided by 2. If you have the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared, that's going to equal n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And if you have the sum from i equals 1 to n of i to the third power, then that's going to equal n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. Or you can rewrite that as n times n plus 1 over 2 and that entire quantity squared. All right, so if you are still writing this down, feel free to press pause and finish up. But we're going to go ahead and jump to our first example. Okay, so for our first example, let's say if we wanted to find a formula for the sum, uh -oh, clean that up, there we go, for the sum of n terms, and put a little single quotation around the n, n terms for say the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum i equals 1 to n of 16i over n squared. Okay, why isn't that clearing up a little bit more? There we go, that's a little bit better. Using the summation formulas And we'll put S in parentheses in case it's more than one. To find the limit uh -oh, as N approaches infinity. Okay, so we're actually going to find the limit. All right, so to solve this one, You want to remember that the sum from i equals 1 to n of just i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. All right, so we're going to go ahead and write down our original problem, so you have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of 16i over n squared. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get everything that does not have an i, that is not an i. Okay, so we're going to get the 16, we're going to get the n squared, and we're going to move it behind the summation. Because remember, this is all just being multiplied. So we're just going to get this, and if it's not involving an i, we can just put it right behind it. Okay, so that's the limit as n approaches infinity. And we're going to move the 16 and the n squared. So you have 16 over n squared the sum from i equals 1 to n, since you move the 16 and the n squared, that just leaves the i. All right, so we're going to get this, the sum from i equals 1 to n of i, 
and we're going to replace it with n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so you have the limit as n approaches infinity of 16 over n squared times n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and simplify it. So we go ahead and distribute that n. So it's going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity. You have 16 divided by 2. That's just 8. So we can go ahead and simplify that right there. So you have 8 times n squared plus n. over this n squared times 2. Remember the 2 simplified with the 16, which gave us the 8. So that's just over n squared. All right. So before we move on to the next step, you have n squared plus n over n squared. So n squared plus n over n squared, you're going to actually separate that equal n squared over n squared plus n over n squared, which simplifies to 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, so this is going to simplify to the limit as n approaches infinity. of 8 times 1 plus 1 over n. All right, so really, if you wanted to, we're going to go ahead and move that 8 out to the front. So you have 8 times the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, now this allows us to just go ahead and distribute that limit to both of those terms. Okay, so that's going to equal 8 times the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity. Okay, so that leaves us with 8. So we know the limit of a constant is always just going to be that constant. So the limit of 1 as n approaches infinity is just going to be 1. Plus, we have the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity. So as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this value or this function approaches 0. So that is just 0. So that leaves us with 8 times 1 or just 8 as our final answer. Okay. So as you can see, there's a lot of algebra and simplifying and things like that going on in addition to actually using the limits and our summation formulas. So it's a pretty nice mix of a little bit of everything in this problem. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and do one more example. All right, so for this one, so we find a formula for the sum of n terms for the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of i equals 1 to n of 1 over n to the third power of i minus 1 squared 
using the summation formulas and put the S in parentheses in case it's more than one to find the limit. And of course, that's the limit as n approaches infinity. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this one. Okay, but to do that, we do have to remember a couple of summation formulas. Okay, so you have the sum from i equals 1 to n of i equals n times n plus 1 over 2, and the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared equals n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Let me clean up that six a little bit. There we go. Okay, so those are two of the formulas we're going to need for this problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just rewrite our original problem. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over n to the third power times i minus 1 squared. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get that i minus 1 squared. And we're going to expand it, but we only need the i's, the i's form, the i's uh, terms. So we don't need this 1 over n to the third. So we're going to get that and move it behind the summation. Okay, so you have the limit as n approaches infinity, 1 over n to the third power, times the sum from i equals 1 to n. i minus 1 squared is just i minus 1 times i minus 1. So that is going to be i squared minus 2i plus 1. All right. So from there, we're just going to go ahead and distribute our summation to both, to, well, not both, but all three of those terms. Okay, so we're going to move that over just a little bit and make sure we have enough room. So that's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n to the third power. If we distribute that summation sign to all of those terms, we have the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared minus 2, and we're just going to get that 2 and bring it out front, so that's the 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of i, so instead of 2i, we just make 2 times that sum of i, plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1. All right, so we see here that we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n to the third. We can go ahead and replace the sum from i equals 1 I equals one to n of i squared. We can replace that with this formula here. So you have n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 minus 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of just i, which is n times n, time, n times n plus 1 over 2. We have n times n plus 1 over 2, so let's multiply it there, 
plus you have the sum of a constant from 1 to n. It's just that constant times n. So you have 1 times n. You could just put n, but I'll put 1 times n. All right, so now we just simplify these terms. So, so to combine these terms, we have to have a common denominator. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n to the third. So the least common denominator is 6. So you have n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 minus. So instead of 2, we can make that 6 over 6. So multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. So that's 6n times n plus 1 over 6 plus, and we can make this, instead of 1n, make it 6n over 6. Okay, so that equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n to the third. So if we go ahead and do the FOIL method on these two factors and then multiply all of those by n, we get 2n to the third plus n squared plus 2n squared plus n. Then if we distribute this minus 6n, we have minus 6n squared minus 6n plus 6n all over 6. All right, so if we keep on simplifying, 1 over n to the third, let me move that up. We have 2n to the third. So we can go ahead and cross that out since we've already got that one. So now we look at our n squared terms. We have 2n squared and n squared, so it's 3n squared minus 6n squared. So we have 3n squared minus 6n squared, which is negative 3n squared, so minus 3n squared. We have n, well, actually, these two cancel each other out. So we just have plus n. All over 6. Okay, now, since we're dealing with just the n terms, we can go ahead and multiply these two. You have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n to the third minus 3n squared plus n over 6n to the third. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to separate all of these terms. So that's going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n to the third over 16 to the third minus 3n squared over 6n to the third plus n over 6n to the third. Okay, so you can see here that the n to the third cancel each other out. So we're right at the end. We should have enough room. So the limit as n approaches infinity So we have 2 over 6. We could make that 1 third, but I'll leave it as 2 over 6 for now. Minus, you have the n squared cancels and those two of those cancel out. So you have 3 over 6 n. So you have 3 over 6n plus this n cancels out with one of those. So you have 1 over 6n squared. Okay, so if we go ahead and distribute the limit to all of those, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 over 6. So 2 over 6, we can simplify that to just one third minus the limit 
So 3 over 6 n as n approaches infinity plus the limit of 1 over 6 n squared as n approaches infinity. Okay, so if you notice for these two terms, these two become zero because you have a constant divided by a denominator that's growing and growing and growing. So that becomes zero and that becomes zero. So you have the limit of one third as n approaches infinity. And remember, the limit of a constant is just that constant. So you end up with just one third minus zero plus zero is just one third. Okay, so that would be your final answer for this problem. All right, so those are the two examples. Hopefully that made sense and I will see you on the next video.